So, I mean, in your line of work, I'm sure you've lost count of how many people would have said to you, secular science has clearly proven that the Earth is millions of years old. How do you normally answer that, Simon? Yeah, again, so when people say science has proven this, science has proven that, the first question to ask people, what do you mean by science? Because if you just think about that word science, it just means, if you look at the, its, its definition in the dictionary, it just means to know. And there are different ways of knowing about God's world. There's what we call um, observational science, which is one way to know about the world where you repeat um, tests uh, and do predictions. And that's good science. In fact, that sort of science actually came out of the Reformation. It was a Reformation in theology that began a Reformation in science. So actually, when people say, well, science disproves the Bible, well, the history of science would, would show that to be absolutely false because many of the first founders of modern science were all Christian. Many of them, not all of them, but many of them were. But then there's what we call historical science, which is your belief about the past when you weren't there to see what went on. And we would say, well, that's what evolution in millions of years is, really, when you think about it. Because when people say, well, the Big Bang is fact. Well, what scientist was there to to witness the Big Bang? Well, no one was. We that obviously. So it's it's what people believe happened in the past. And if the current data in science shows that to be wrong, then you need to readjust your thinking. And here's the other thing we need to to keep in mind when people say science says this or science says that. We need to say, well, actually, science doesn't say anything. Science is a tool. Science is quiet. It's scientists who say things about Earth's history, about the world being millions of years old. And scientists have prejudices. They have biases. And many scientists, whether they willingly acknowledge this or not, do their science in light of the philosophy of naturalism and the assumption of uniformitarianism. Naturalism is basically the idea that nature is all that exists. There's no such thing as the supernatural. And uniformitarianism, uh, I just talked about Charles Lyell and James Hutton, they basically helped this principle that basically the present conditions of the world are the way it's always been, slow, gradual processes. And so scientists, when they have those two things in mind, naturalism and uniformitarianism, it's no wonder they come up with great ages for the earth and long, long periods of time, because under those assumptions, that makes sense of the world. But if you have different assumptions, not naturalism, but supernaturalism, that God created the world supernaturally, he spoke it into existence over the period of six days, and then it's not uniformitarianism, the rates and conditions in the world have always been the same, because since there was a global flood in the days of Noah, the global flood would would upset the rates and conditions in the world. And it would lay down the majority of the rock layers that we see in the world. And that's where people really get the great age of the earth. The idea that the rock layers that we see around the world are millions of years old. But the idea of a global flood destroys uniformitarianism. And so when people say science says, you just got to remember, it's not science saying something, it's scientists. And what are the biases and prejudices those scientists have uh, when they think about these issues?